I want to be able to conditionally format the top data bars in a different color to the rest and the built-in data bars don't let me do that. There's this great little technique that allows you to do it and I'll briefly show you it now. I'm just going to insert a column here and call it top patch. Top actuals. And I'm going to make it equal to the actuals column. And I could just conditionally format it and add a data bar on there. And it would look fine. So, you know, remove the numbers, it'll look all right. But I'm not going to do that because I want the top data bar in a different color like this. And the rest of the built-in data bars, they, none of them let you do that. So this great little technique that I'm going to use, and I'll show you it in a minute, to replicate data bars I learned from Joel and Glenn Goldwire. I've adapted it a bit so you can use it in a slightly different way to conditionally format things. But I'll just briefly show you the technique. So I put, say, the number 10 in there. And to the right of it, imagine this was a variant, and I just want to add a data bar to it. So use the repeat function to repeat a character. Now I'm going to use this character, which is above the backslash at the left of the keyboard of the Windows key. And I'm going to repeat that by the number in the cell to the left. And you can see that we basically get a sort of bit like a data bar, right? And when we change the number, it goes longer or shorter. And it looks a bit kind of rubbish. So what we need to do is change the font to play them. When we do that, it becomes a solid data bar because it squashes all the characters together. So as long as we're using the playbill font, it acts just like a data bar. And as the number changes, you can see. So that is the key to the technique. And we're going to essentially use this inside our table. We're just going to put new modifications in place to make sure that we're not having predatory wide data. So one of the things we need to do is establish the maximum value that we're going to see as a data bar. So we'll just call that um, the max of the actuals, which for that one, there, and that will make it dynamic to the table. And I'm just going to improve the format of that with Control Shift One. Um, and now I'm going to now say that what we want is to scale that. So let's set up a scale, and essentially we can think of this is essentially is the maximum width we want the data. Base. So 100, for example, is going to be like that wide there. Um, but we want maybe we could try something like 50. Um, that looks okay. So we can sort of play around with that. and depends on personal text, but that's going to be the maximum. So I'm going to put a just a 50 in there, a scale. And then I'm going to give these two a name, as in a name range. So click on that. Uh, the box up there and put in one for n max actual and the other one we'll call n max scale and in the formula bar for the top actual we'll use the repeat of the symbol i said a minute ago and then the number of times we'll repeat it is going to be the actuals but we need to divide that by the max actual and then multiply it back up by the scale but essentially if we see the max actual it'll end up with 50 when we hit enter, that'll spill down, but we get the sort of crazy result. We just need to change the font then to um, Playbill. And then, as you could see, we essentially end up with uh, something that looks like a data bar. We might actually be able to sort of change that scale, I think, or we go up to about maybe 60 or something, perhaps 65. No, let's maybe not 65. Let's keep it at 60 anyway. Right, there we go. And we've got on our data bars and so we've got a sort of formatted data bar there and we can change to any grade sort of max table there. But why on earth we gone through all that effort of recreating essentially what we could have done with conditional formatting almost instant. And it's so we can apply the extra conditional formats, the highlight things that we couldn't do with the traditional but so, for example, we can highlight the top sales number, which we're going to do now, the bottom sales number, top five, bottom five, anything essentially that we can create in a formula that identifies the things that we want to highlight, we can now do and build into a conditional form. So the first one I'm going to create is the maximum sales highlight, because we've got the maximum over here already identified. Now we can't use the highlight sales rules, it just doesn't work, trust me on that. What we need to do is create a manual 
data format. We just need to bear in mind where the active cell was when we clicked this. We're going to use a formula. We're active cells in L11, so we need to say that we pick the one on the same row, so the actual cells there, we'll just use F4 to sort of make sure we're fixing the column but not the row. And what we need to do is say that we're going to format it if it's greater than or equal to, probably use equal to on the name for a bit of rounding here, um, the max cell we've already identified, and that's fixed to cell D2. And we'll pick a format for that. And it's actually just a font color that we need to change because it's basically a font. And when we do that, you see it's okay. We need to actually change the applies to range. So we just need to apply that to that old column there. And that would be completely dynamic with the table size. And we hit OK. You can see that works. Picked up the top sound and uh, highlighted it. Well, there's one slight issue with that, and that is that when you filter, you can see that we're not getting anything um, highlighted because it's not contextual within the filter, looking for the max in the whole table. And what I want to do is make it look for the max in just the sales that are showing on screen. So one of the things we can do is use the subtotal. So we can pick the subtotal max and we pick 104, which essentially says the max of anything visible on screen, no matter how it was hidden. And when we do that, you can see now, straight away, Whenever we click on our slicer there, it'll pick up the max of whatever we happen to be filtering to. It becomes completely contextual, which is ideal. Of course, as I've said here, if you wanted something different, like your top 20%, something, you just have to change that formula. So like greater than or equal to the max times 80%, for example, will give you the top 20%, max times 50%, give you the top 50%, etc. So I think the you know, you can probably see that this is going to be easy to create your own formula for this. So there's a couple of things we just need to tidy up here to make it look like a great report. So I'll move the slicer and the title. And now when I add new data on the paste it on the bottom there, you can see it instantly picks it up. All the filters are working, all the variances are working, and you can now very easily see where the key variances are. You can sort, you can filter. Your manager is going to be super impressed with this compared to a normal report and see exactly what's going on. But all this is nothing compared to what we're going to go through in the next video, because we're going to use always the same kind of techniques, but inside a pivot table. So you're now going to have like drill down capabilities, um, put loads more data in it, and you can have monthly reports even with trends and vertical data bars and stuff. So it's opening up a whole new world of graphical style going to hugely increase the readability and the flexibility of your reporting, really up your game, make you stand out for the crowd. I'll see you in the next video.